Hello people, welcome to the next section, Matrices, Probability and Statistics. In this section we will cover a few of the basics here, such as matrices, probability and statistics, that will be utilised later in the course. Now we move on to the first video, Matrices and Vectors. In this video we are going to learn what are matrices and vectors, and how do we represent them in our Go programmes. We will first look at vectors. A vector is an ordered collection of numbers arranged in either a row, left to right, or column, up and down. Each of the numbers in a vector is called a component. This might be, for example, a collection of numbers that represents our company sales, or it might be a collection of numbers representing temperatures. It's, of course, natural for us to use Go slices to represent these ordered collections of data. This is an example. Here we will be printing 11 and 5.2 in the vector. We save and build this file. When we build and run this, we get the result. Slices are indeed ordered collections. However, they don't really represent the concept of rows or columns, and we would still need to work out various vector operations on top of slices. Thankfully, on the vector operation side, GoNum provides floats to operate on slices of float64 values and mat, which along with the matrices provides a vector type. Now if we build this program, we get this output. We will now learn more about vector operations. Working with vectors necessitates the use of certain vector, matrix-specific operations and rules. Both floats and mat provide built-in methods and functions for vector slice operations, such as dot products, sorting, and distance. First, we will work with GoNum floats. This is the whole code for this example. As you can see, we are using GoNum floats. We then initialize a couple of vectors represented as slices. We then compute the dot product of A and B. We scale each element of A by 1.5 and compute the length of b. Let's build and run this code now. So in the result we get the dot product and length of b. We can also do similar operations with go num mat. Here we use go num mat and all the other things remain the same. Let us run this now. Here we get the result as 9.77. The semantics are similar in the two cases. If you are only working with vectors, or you just need some lightweight and quick operations on slices of floats, then GoNum floats is likely a good choice. However, if you are working with both matrices and vectors, and or want access to a wider range of vector matrix functionality, you are likely better off with GoNum mat. We will now learn about matrices. Matrices and linear algebra may seem complicated to many people, but simply put, matrices are just rectangular organizations of numbers, and linear algebra dictates the rules associated with their manipulation. For example, a matrix A with numbers arranged on an M by N rectangle may look like this. The components of A are the individual numbers that we are arranging into a matrix, and the subscripts indicate the location of the components within the matrix. The first index is the row index, and the second index is the column index. More generally, A could have any shape or size with M rows and N columns. For instance, in our example, we want to form this example matrix. To form a matrix like this with, to form a matrix like this with a go num slash mat, we need to create a slice of float64 values that is a flat representation of all the matrix components. We need to create a slice of float64 values as shown here. Then we can supply this along with the dimension information. Here we have formed our matrix and add this code to get the result. Note that we have also used the nice formatting logic in GoNum mat to print the matrix as a sanity check. When we run this, we get the matrix. We can then access and modify certain values within A via built-in methods. We have done it in example 2. Let's look at it. Here we get the values in a specific column and k-specific row. Also, we can modify a single element, entire row and column. 
Let's run this code now. As you can see, the values have been changed. Now we will see matrix operations. Some of the arithmetic associated with matrices behave in a similar way to what you might expect. However, you need to take special care when doing things such as multiplying matrices together or taking an inverse. For example, you could do this method to perform element-wise multiplications, applications of user-defined functions, or applications of functions from third-party packages. Then, for all the various things such as determinants, eigenvalue, vector solvers, and inverses, GoNumMat has you covered. Again, I won't expand on all the functionality, but here is a sample of some of the operations. Here we compute and output the transpose of the matrix, determinant of A and inverse of A. Note that in this example, we leverage Go's explicit error handling functionality when we need to ensure that we are maintaining integrity and readability. Matrices don't always have inverses. There are various situations like this that arise when working with matrices and large datasets, and we want to ensure that our application behaves as expected. Let's check this code now. We build and run the program. As you can see, we got the transpose, determinant, and inverse of matrix A. That's all for now.